Nothing feels better than a great night's sleep, no matter how old you are. But when children or teens cannot sleep, it may be a symptom that something else is going on. And today we have Dr. John Schuen, Division Chief of Pediatric and Pulmonary Sleep Medicine with us. So let's start with a disease that is actually more common than a lot of people think, asthma. Yes, asthma is the most common chronic illness in childhood today. Really? Mm -hmm. I think that might take some people by surprise. You know, a lot of people know about asthma. Why don't we talk about what asthma is? What's happening to the body? Yes, well, asthma causes spasm of the airways because our airways have little muscles in them mm -hmm. that, uh, that constrict and make the caliber of the airway smaller such that people have difficulty breathing. It's like breathing through a straw. That would be the closest example. And it also causes inflammation, which is just a fancy term for swelling and irritation. And those two things can really wreak havoc in the lives of our children. Mm -hmm. What are some triggers for asthma? Well, there are a lot of triggers actually. Mm -hmm. And so illness is the most common trigger under the age of five, but allergies, uh, changes in weather, exercise, strong emotion, uh, and sometimes things like uh, reflux, heartburn, mm -hmm. or uh, obstructive sleep apnea in the middle of the night. And these are some signs that parents might be seeing. So as we kind of started the conversation with, your child may be having some problems uh, sleeping, and that could be a sign of something more. How do you know if maybe asthma is the problem? Well, that's a great question. If a child is coughing on a regular basis, mm -hmm. then that should trigger some concern in the mind of the parent. And so uh, everybody can cough during a simple upper respiratory tract infection, you know, the common cold. Mm -hmm. But if, it, if the cough or, or wheezing lingers on for more than 10 days, and becomes a recurrent theme in that child's life, then that's something that you should bring to the attention of your primary care physician. Yeah, you know, asthma is something that uh, we know that a lot of people uh, take measures to actually control. What are some of the things that, that people can do to help their asthma and thus lead to better sleep? That's a great question. Well, th there's a lot of things that you can do mm -hmm. in, uh, one is, is really make the diagnosis okay. and, and so that, in, that really requires getting into your primary care doctor and talking about the child's symptoms and and also getting a sense of how things have gone you know over the past year or two years as mm -hmm. far as trends mm -hmm. so trying to identify those trends two then it's a matter of teasing apart what the triggers are uh, so that you can avoid them if possible you know if if the child is allergic to dust mites then there are steps that you can take uh, in your very own home to limit dust mite exposure, thereby getting a better night's sleep and thereby getting having a better day uh, mm -hmm. while during your waking hours. <laughs> so let's talk about lack of sleep and what that does because we know that you know asthma can lead to not getting a good night's sleep, yes. but then not getting a good night's sleep can lead to a lot of other things. And you've probably seen this in your patients. Yes. Not doing well in school. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, impulsivity, uh, inability to pay attention, uh, just distractibility, they just can't seem to focus uh, on what the teacher is teaching them. All those can be signs of a poor night's sleep, which can be from a number of reasons, but one of which can be asthma. Mm -hmm. So the child who's chronically coughing at night, even though they seem relatively well during the day, that can be someone who has significant asthma. Dr. Schuin, is asthma diagnosed a lot more in young people today? I mean, I feel like it's something that we've always heard about, but is it something that is recognized uh, more often or, or commonly diagnosed? And so there are a lot of people who are being treated for it right now? Yes, both. Both of those okay. comments are true. Is it one, uh, doctors uh, and other providers are just better at making the diagnosis mm -hmm. because we have a much better and clearer definition of what asthma is. Two, there is more asthma out there, and there are a variety of theories as to why that might be, but there's definitely more asthma than there were like when I was a child. Yeah, so. does it have to do somewhat with like uh, West Michigan? and weather that we get here, you know, it's always changing. It can be, yeah, yeah, the, you know, the fact that you never know what kind of a day you're gonna have in West oh, yes. Michigan. <laughs> it's 60 degrees one day and it's sub-zero the next, right? But also it's other things. People think that uh, because we, we, it's, we live in an era where we treat things with antibiotics 
and kids are not fighting infections on their own, mm -hmm. that, the, that the hygiene hypothesis is something that's common out there to explain why we see more asthma. Yeah, that's very interesting. And I know at Spectrum Health, you really treat things with a team approach, mm -hmm. you know, and yes. definitely walking people along to make them feel better in their journey. We have information right here on the screen of where people can get in contact with you and learn a little bit more about good sleep, potentially asthma, and what may be happening in your family. We want to thank you, Dr. Shuen, for coming by. Thank you. And sharing your expertise. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. We'll have more 8 West when we come back. Are you West?